thanks for the introduction. Uh, just to begin with, uh, with a clear concept, I'm not here to sell anything. I'm, uh, we are a customer of Dell, and uh, we are one of the first few adopters of Dell compellent boxes. So, so when Dell came to us saying that they wanted us to share our experiences, good or bad, uh, on this forum, we said, why not? It's a, it's a good way to reach out to the rest of the folks and uh, share with them what we went through as part of our uh, uh, strategy to decide on Dell storage and uh, what were the good points or what were the bad points around uh, around the boxes we bought. So uh, to give you a small background on the organization I work for, uh, it's called Eclux. Uh, it's uh, the only, probably, one, uh, it's the first listed KPO uh, in India. Uh, we listed on BSC NSC. Uh, we have a revenue close to 100 million, uh, market cap close to 500 billion, uh, million, half a billion dollars. And we are roughly around 4,500 odd people. Uh, we recently made an acquisition, which is public news now. Uh, uh, we kind of adding a thousand more headcounts as part of the acquisition. So we'll be roughly around 5,500 odd uh, people. We are based out of uh, Mumbai, headquartered out of Mumbai, have global offices across the world and uh, delivery centers right now in Mumbai and Pune. The acquisition we did is uh, up north. So we have a new center up in uh, Chandigarh. Uh, we st uh, started off as an organization in 2000, so fairly young. Uh, the entire senior management there is roughly around 15, 16 years of uh, experience. And the average age of uh, the workforce is around, is around 35, year, uh, th 35 year old people. So we have a very interesting and a challenging working uh, environment. So you have people who, uh, who are part of the organization who know more than what you do on technology and what is happening across the world. So it's uh, difficult to keep up with their demands on what new is ha happening and how can we kind of uh, adopt that as part of our uh, infrastructure or, or our uh, network. Uh, having given you this uh, background, we, f we are a KPO, which is, if you have to understand it, it's a, it's a BPO++, plus plus, so we are kind of slightly up the value chain on the kind of work we do when we compare to a pure, pure BPO job. Uh, we have two sets of clients. We have financial services as one vertical, where you can, any, possibly, uh, any possible top 10 uh, banking, I, I banking in, or uh, financial institute you can think about is our client. And we have another vertical which is called sales and marketing services, where we have all uh, high tech clients as uh, our uh, uh, high-tech uh, high organizations as our uh, clients. So be it the, uh, be it the li uh, likes of Semantic or uh, any of these kind, they are clients to us. Where we do a lot of uh, work around, uh, you know, on online sales management, marketing, lead generation, that kind of work we do. So we have these two uh, verti uh, verticals uh, which uh, deliver this re these uh, revenues for us joint revenues for us. We, uh, on, a, on a technology side, the, the, you know, the environment makes it very challenging for us because you have two sets of customers. One set of customers want, uh, you know, wants us to log in into their environment, do the processing there, and then lo log off from their environment. The other set of customers want, want us to download information uh, could be part of their environment or could be general public information, process it and send the work back to them. So there are, there are a lot of restrictions since because of the kind of clients that we have, there are a lot of in, uh, restrictions around data security and, uh, you know, uh, compliances, information security that we need to adhere to. Each client that we have has, do, has, has their own set of uh, requirements. So any new MSA or, uh, or a statement of work we sign has comes along with its own set of security requirements for each, each uh, different set of, uh, set of clients. This, uh, you know, this kind of uh, work environment makes it, made it very challenging for us. So if I have to sit down and create an architecture, an IT architecture for eClerks, I would end up creating physical partitions of everything. So I would need to create, you know, have a separate uh, firewall for a client, you know, separate server uh, for a client for the compute part, 
have a separate storage for the client. So then that, that is one, uh, one kind of an architecture we, create, we can create. The other way we thought we, we can do is go uh, the, the whole hog on the virtualization part of the story, where we have virtualization right from the firewall level down to the compute and down to the storage level. So, so we decided to do the latter because obviously it is economical to have a virtualized environment right from, uh, rather than have physical separate environment for each of these clients that we manage. Hence, if you look at our architecture, we have virtualization, VDOMs right from the firewall going on the compute. Uh, we, all possible fla flavors of uh, server virtualization, you can think of Hyper-V, uh, VMware, uh, Citrix, we are, uh, we are a customer of. We even ha have virtualization on the desktop. We've gone whole hog on the thin client strategy now. Uh, we've mo moved away from the traditional desktop and we've seen a fair amount of ROI there. And we have virtualization even on the storage part. So that is the architecture uh, we have. Uh, and given this kind of a unique architecture we have, we, all, we decided to go in for a compellent box. The reason why, if you have to ask me why we decided on compellent box is, you know, primarily four or five basic reasons. We really liked the concept of automated tiering that a compellent box has. So it uh, moves data between your SAS and your nearline SAS or SATA, whatever you want to call, uh, call it, based on rules. And you can set up rules based on recency of data and other uh, kind of strategy. It looks like a sales pitch, but believe me, when you actually implement it, it, it really results in a lot of benefit from an overall TCO perspective. Because when you size, a, when you buy a storage and you, your team tries to size the storage, they will firstly oversize it. Secondly, they will not know, know, not know for which workloads they should go for a SATA kind of an architecture and for which workloads they should go for a SAN kind of an architecture. So hence, the entire concept of having a, 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 an automated tiering kind of a model is, is really helpful. That is one feature that we found you know, was very relevant, especially in our kind of architecture where you, have, you need to have a storage which needs to cater to the client secure environment and you have to have a storage which, which needs to cater to the corporate environment. So, so that is one feature which which was a clear decision from our side, which we decided to go in for, for a Dell compellent box. Uh, I think we were one of the f early adopters for uh, one of the first few ones in India to go in for a Dell compellent box. Uh, the, second, uh, the second part which uh, kind of uh, made our decision easy was the story from Dell on, on the number of models and on the hardware, software, TCO was very comp compelling. So it was easy to, uh, for us to understand there, were not, there was not a huge menu of, uh, uh, you know, kind of boxes to choose from. There were limited menu of boxes to choose from. I mean, it, it was not confusing if, uh, because we traditionally have been kind of a house for a lot of uh, storage vendors. And the problem is when you buy one box and you implement it and you ask him, why is this not working? So the vendor will say, oh, you didn't, this particular feature doesn't exist, exist in this box. So you should have chosen that box. So, that issue was not that uh, uh, prominent when we chose Dell as a, uh, when we chose Compellent as a box. On the other side also, on the software part, we, we figured out uh, their entire story of, uh, you know, uh, protecting your investment into the software really works. Uh, we've had these experience earlier where we bought boxes of storage vendors. And when we went in for an upgrade of the box, so we had to, uh, you know, junk all the software licenses that came along with the box. So we were told that this will not work and you have to buy a new set of hardware and uh, the software which comes along with, with the box. So I think that was one another story which was, uh, uh, which kind of, you know, helped us in deciding on uh, taking Compellent as, as a solution for us. The final portion that uh, we feel also helped us is the concept of cre creating virtual LANs or virtual volumes, uh, which you can create on, on the fly. With the traditional uh, storage, you t uh, when you kind of allocate volumes to the, uh, to the workloads, you will always end up allocating much higher volumes than required to those workloads. 
and when you actually start using it, uh, you will realize that probably you know you the uh, the the data growth in those vol uh, volumes is not that much, and whereas uh, you, when you allocated a lesser volume to a particular application or a workload, the data growth there, there is more. So that was a typical dilemma you you used to face, which we found was not that much uh, when we bought in uh, we went in for this uh, compellent box. So so I think th these are the couple of basic reasons why we chose compellent as uh, a solution for eclerks uh, from a storage perspective uh, compared to the other vendors that we worked. So as I said, uh, it's, I'm not here to sell anything, just a small uh, talk and a discussion around what we have uh, as part of what the challenges uh, we faced as part, as part of our business as usual and uh, what is the IT strategy, IT roadmap we have, the entire virtualization story and uh, why we chose uh, Dell Compellent as a box. So just kept it short and sweet. If you have any questions, I'm around or happy to take them. Okay, thanks.